What's up everyone? Brian here, Real Hard Fishing. Uh, gonna do a little review today. I uh, seen them, or I think y'all seen my last couple of videos, y'all are watching my videos. The BP-12 that I had, um, I ended up sending that back because the customer service from Panzer was garbage and DK Firearms decided that they would refund me my money. So I had to send a couple extra parts back yesterday because I forgot to put some parts on the box, but they'll be there Friday, so hopefully they'll process my refund. In the meantime, I went ahead and got that. That is the Black Aces Tactical FD-12. Uh, it's made by Hunt Group. Uh, they're from Turkey. Uh, it is another Turkish-made bullpup shotgun. It's very nice so far. I haven't shot it yet. Uh, I'm going to go over you know, a lot of things that are different about this gun compared to the BP-12. And... Um, some of the things that I think might be better or worse. I don't know. We'll see if we shoot it and handle it. So, first thing off rip, I know y'all notice the, the drum, 20 round drum. All right. Now, on the BP 12, sorry, on the BP 12, you had to modify this drum to get it to work. You had to sand these corners down a little because the lower receiver uh, mag lip here would not allow the drum to fully be inserted and clip in. So we had to modify it. Now this one, the Black Aces FD, you can buy this drum and right out of the box, it accepts it. This is the Pro Mag um, 20 round drum. It's for the AR style 12 gauge shotguns. I think it's the MK, uh, MK 1919s or whatever it is. Um, another thing different is the BP-12 did come with a cheek rest, an adjustable cheek rest, you know, in case you had different optics or whatever. This one does not. Uh, another thing different, the sling mount is going to be right here on your butt pad and right here where the upper receiver meets your hand guard. And the one thing that I like about this is the fact that the sling mount here is in between the hand guard and the upper receiver, which gives it a more flush mount. Because the problem that I had with the BP-12 was... That was not having a flush mount with the hand guards of the upper receiver or something out of spec and was causing the muzzle brake to rest on the inside of the hand guard because it would cause the hand guard to shift to the left after a few cycles. So I don't know what was going on there. That was the issue that I was having. I was trying to, to tell Panzer Arms, and I had only shot that gun a handful of times before I noticed what was going on. And when I say handful of times, I literally mean I could have held how many shot shells I held in my hand. You know that went through the magazine two mags is what i put through it um and they wanted to give me a hard time about you know shipping it back they wanted me to send the gun back at my expense also the chokes that i got with it one of them were rusted they wanted me to send that back and one of the flip up sites was messed up wouldn't hardly flip up they want me to send that back all at my expense and this was a brand new gun that's that's that shouldn't have been they should have just sent me everything that I needed brand new, replaced the whole gun to start with, or I would have been happy with a whole brand new upper. They didn't want to do that. They wanted me to do inspect it. Da, 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 da. Anyways, DK Arms was really cool, so hopefully everything works out with that. Um, some more things about this gun now. Sorry. Um, it is ambidextrous. You can change the charging handle you know, to the right-hand side. The things that are different again, back to that. You get a, a nice foregrip here. The uh, BP-12 had an angled foregrip. It was okay, it was comfortable, but it's nowhere near as stable as the, uh, the actual foregrip you have here that you can hold on to. Um, the grip is slightly different here on the trigger guard. Uh, not majorly different. Um, it is angled a little more back, so it kind of makes the drum a little more uncomfortable when you're holding the gun because you gotta kind of angle your elbow up more compared to the BP-12. Um, this came with one barrel wrench because you only have the one lock nut that you need to unscrew to uh, break the gun down. On the BP-12, it had the gas block, which was it's a rotating gas block, and you had to use two barrel wrenches. So it came with two barrel wrenches. Um, these are reverse threads as well. That's another thing. Um, all this is reverse thread on this gun. The BP-12 was regular threaded uh, threads, right-hand threads. These are left-hand threads. Um, the upper or the handguard here is a different design. This is a solid upper. Uh, there's no M lock or whatever the heck it was on the BB 12. You could see that the BB 12, you could see your gas piston, you can hear it slide up and down. Um, 
this one you can't. Um, yeah, let's see what else is different here. Um, I don't think there's too much more that's, oh, the mag release is a little different, it's a little longer. You know, a little longer mag release on the left hand side here. Uh, the, the takedown pins, there's only two. You have one here and you have one here. And there you have little springs right here you got to push up to push them out. The BP-12 had three. It had one up here on the front that went through the handguard as well. This one does not. Um, I think that's about it on uh, the differences. Um, the safety, I think, could be a little more crisp. The fit goes on fire nice, but when you put it on safety, it's not very crisp. It is ambidextrous safety as well. Um, ambidextrous mag release. You can take the charger handle, put it on this side, you can release your mag right-handed, or you can release it left-handed. Um, what else? I think it uh, might be close to being everything that is different about this gun. Oh, I mind. Oh, this one's black, of course. I didn't get it in sand t or desert tan. Uh, the other colors were way more expensive, and they were sold out of the other colors. Most, I think, every one of the other colors. I think this was um. A lot cheaper. The other ones were more expensive, so I was like, let's get the black. I think it looks cooler anyways. And there's a lot of cool looking colors out there, don't get me wrong. But I think this looks cooler than my Desert Tan one. Uh, I did put a red dot on here. Um, so, and I have not broke this gun down yet. We're going to shoot this in a little bit. And we will go from there to see, you know, how it functions. The BB-12 had two pistons that it came with. You know, had a low velocity and a high velocity. I recommend that you use a high velocity piston. So break it in 25 to 50 shells, uh, 1,200 feet per second, one ounce to 1,350 feet per second at one and a quarter ounce, I think it was. And then anything over that, which I think that was one and a half ounce, at thir oh, anything over 1,350 feet per second, they wanted you to use a high velocity piston up to 1,500 feet per second. Uh, this has one piston in it, so it shoots high and low velocity. I only have high velocity. I don't have any low velocity, so we won't be able to test the theory on the low velocity today, but we will definitely put the high velocity to the test and see what's going on. Now, to get the things that it came with in the in the box, okay? So, things that it came with in the box, two five-round magazines that did not come fully loaded. I loaded those with black Aces tactical ammunition that I got from Palmetto State Armory way before that I got this gun and way before I even knew that made black Aces made this gun. It came with two extra chokes and a choke tool and a cool Black Aces tactical little box put them in. No rust. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yes. It came with the owner's manual, which doesn't tell you hardly jack about anything about this gun other than how to break it down and a bunch about safety. One barrel wrench and a very cool case to put it in. The BP-12 came in a cardboard box. I mean, this isn't no fancy, you know, expensive gun case, but it's a gun case. You know, it's definitely way better than a cardboard box. And it's got your styrofoam padding in it, which is awesome. So, and it also came with the empty chamber indicator. You put in there after you're done shooting. So, uh, I like it so far. And I have no issues with the upper or the handguard sliding or shifting and resting on the muzzle brake yet. And when I shoot it. I am not going to use the drum because I know the drum functions. It feeds. It's fine. I'm going to use the magazines because it's way more comfortable. I don't want that thing jamming in my arm right now. I'll do that on another video so y'all can watch me get all bruised up. Um, other than that, stick around for the shooting part of the video. And uh, I don't think there's anything that I missed. Let me see. BB-12. What I liked about it or what I didn't like about it. I like the fact that it was a bullpup 12 gauge. It was pretty freaking cool. That's what I liked about it. I hate their customer service. Oh, that's that's it. Okay. That's what I wanted to tell y'all. One year warranty on the Panzer Arms BP-12. Lifetime warranty. All right. And as you saw, the importer is in Florida. You have a problem with this? I live in Ocala. Just drive down there, drop it off. You know, I don't deal with shipping. The importer for Panzer Arms was way up north somewhere. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't drive up there. And they were a joke. So that's why when I looked in the Black Ace found out about this, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, why didn't I get that the first time? Now I'm out a lot more money because of all the extra stuff that I had to do. Blah, blah, blah. I had to do another FFL. But anyways, 
So let's get to the shooting part of this thing. All right, y'all stick around. All right, shoot part of the video. We're going to test the function of this thing real quick and see how it fires. All right, one in the chamber. Got to send it down range. It functions amazing. I'll just get back in and do this review. Stupid GoPros. All right. All right, everyone. Now, holy crap. Did y'all see that? It's time to drink one after that. Um, that is freaking awesome. That thing functioned amazing. Okay, just let you know, right now, this is where it's at. The Panzer, forget it. Lifetime warranty, functions properly right out of the box. Doesn't require a break-in period, of course. I mean, like, you should want to break it in. But, doesn't require it. Freaking sweet. It is so loud, though. It is very loud. Way louder than the Panzer. For some reason, it's louder. But the barrel is the same length. 18 and a half inch barrel. Um, I don't know if maybe it's because the chamber is different. I don't know. But I shot the same ammo out of the panzer as i did out of the fd12 as you see i only put one mag through it function perfect um do need to get a battery from a red dot it's got some kick to it guys that's actually got more kick to that one than the uh panzer maybe upper is shorter because there's actually two inch difference between this gun and the panzer the bp the BP is 30 inches, 30 and a half inches overall length. This is 28 and a half inches overall length. So maybe in the butt pad difference, or it could be in the upper receiver uh, design here. The upper receiver could be smaller. I, I'm not 100% on that. But, uh, and also, proper lock back on empty mag. The bolt catch lock back on empty mag. That was another issue that I was having with the Panzer BP-12. It didn't want it back on an empty mag after the, the the final shot and ejecting that final shot when you pulled the charging handle back it ejected the shell you let go of the charging handle and charging handle went forward that's not supposed to happen it's supposed to lock back so final review so far you know after five rounds and just taking it out of the box i broke it down yet and yada 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 I would definitely recommend this gun to anyone looking for a bullpup style shotgun over the BP-12, over the uh, DP-12, I think it is, the double pump. I think it's the, it's the Tabor, I believe it is. I think it's the Tabor, yeah, Tabor DP-12. Um, for the simple fact that you have to manually turn the magazine, the magazine tubes on that Tabor. I'm sure it's a really good, expensive, well-built gun. I'm not spending that kind of money. Get this. The uh, Keltec. Heard bad stuff about them. They like to gum up after a lot of shots. You know, not a lot of shots, but after a few shots, they start getting warm. And they start sticking when you're trying to pump it. And they don't like to slide back. And uh, like the jam. Um, and then you have the, uh, the DP tool, which is a double pump. Which is the um, double barrel... Uh, pump shotgun and that one tends to jam up as well and it's a selective fire i think you, you fire well it's not select sorry you fire one let off and then the other barrel fires you can't fire both barrels at once you can load each barrel or each side with bean bags slugs or buckshot you know alternate the barrel whatever or you can alternate each magazine tube you know buckshot it doesn't matter I don't like that. Just give me my semi-auto 
Daggum bull pump. This is great. I love these. I'm definitely going to get me a pump action though. I like pump actions for hunting. I, I don't care for pump actions for the house. Um, unless they are proven not to mess up. I haven't seen one uh, bull pump, pump shotgun that hasn't had its problems. I've actually seen these semi-autos run better than the pumps. So, it's all in preference, I think, actually. Really do. Anyways, if you're looking for a bullpup semi-auto shotgun, this is where it's at. Definitely highly recommend the Black Aces Tactical. Like I said, it accepts the 20-round drum right out of the box. No modifications. Uh, you can get 10-round mags for it. Um, Black Aces makes their own ammunition. Matches the, the, the gun. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, this is... And they get a lifetime warranty there in Florida. I don't know where y'all are going to be, but I live in Florida. I'm great with that because I can just drive right down there and only a couple hours away. They're right by Orlando and I live in Ocala. Orlando is only an hour and a half away from me. It's freaking awesome. So anyways, to the final part of this video, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you liked it. Click that bell so you don't miss a notification. I do do a lot of fishing videos. I haven't here recently because fishing has been very, 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 very slow. Ties have sucked. Weather has sucked. Um, every weekend has been crappy for like the last six months. And it's been great weather through the week. So I haven't been doing any fishing through the week because I'm down to one vehicle. So you're going to get a lot of gun reviews for now. And I don't know, maybe some other stuff.